Okay, so what I did is I told you about decays and I mentioned positrons. The unique, we, we used decays and I talked about electromagnetic radiation coming out of the nucleus and those are gamma rays. And there's a field called nuclear medicine and nuclear medicine is based on the idea that if you take an unstable, a radionuclide element, you can actually bind it to molecules. And when you bind those molecules, you pick the molecule that's going to go in the body and get used in a biochemical process. So what we've done in nuclear medicine is we've tagged these molecules with radioactivity. But because all the radioactivity we use in the body to tag and use can either have particulate or gamma emission, we can have therapeutic agents and we inject them and they can actually use radioactivity to do therapeutic functions and kill cells and they should get targeted to the area of the body that's bad, particularly cancer and one of the big things is we use it to treat cancer of the thyroid. But we also do diagnostic nuclear medicine. And with diagnostic nuclear medicine, we pick a radionuclide that's gonna give off a gamma and hopefully not a particle. So gammas are interesting because gamma rays come out of the body. They don't interact much with matter and they can go meters. So we can actually build detector systems that will stop the gammas. They're much denser than your body, so they interact more. And we can take the energy to posit in those detectors. And when we do, we can make a camera. And that camera can go back and figure out where the event happened in your body. Now, traditionally, we use a very simple camera with something called a sodium iodide, very high dense material, that when a gamma goes through it, it creates light and then that light is converted into electrical signal, it gets amplified and then taken out and we can reconstruct the position it came from in the body. But it doesn't have a lot of resolution and the quantification isn't as good, but it works. What happened a couple decades ago is we came up with positron emission tomography. And positron emission tomography takes advantage of the positrons, those antimatter particles I told you about, and the fact that when they decay, they come off at 180 degrees to each other. So now we built a different camera, and this camera has thousands of detectors. And what happens is when the gammas come out of your body from where they went, where these molecules went, they come out at 180 degrees, and one detector over here and one detector over here will detect an event. And we can actually use uh, timing resolution and algorithms to figure out where on the line it happened. And we do have cameras that are time of flight. They can't position exactly where the event happened, but they can come very close. And with this, we can quantitatively know where a decay happened in the body and do it with a resolution of about four millimeters or a little better in humans. This is because we have a big ring and then with animals, we can actually get within one millimeter. Now we can't be much more precise about that because remember I told you the positron is going to slow down as it goes through matter. And so it goes a little distance first and it's totally random how much distance it'll go because each beta that's given off of a nucleus, out of a nucleus from a beta decay, each electron, has a variable energy that has to slow down before we get to the rest mass. And so we can't position it perfectly in a positron. There are some designs to make very high field MRs around it, where then the particle's gonna go in a circle in a magnetic field. And then we might have very precise resolution, but we haven't got the technology quite far enough yet.